What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to focus on understanding and comparing different storage types, such as volatile and non-volatile storage, local storage types, and local network storage options. All right, so let's start by comparing volatile and non-volatile storage. So volatile storage, this is a type of memory that requires power to maintain the stored information. Once the power is cut off, the data is lost. An example of this is what is called RAM or random access memory. And this is the most common form of volatile storage. When you turn on your computer, the RAM is used to store data temporarily that the CPU needs for running applications or performing calculations. However, once you shut down your computer, any data in the RAM is erased. In volatile storage, this is also very fast and it is temporary. Then we have what is called non-volatile storage, and this retains data even when the power is turned off, making it suitable for long-term data storage. And ROM, or read-only memory, is a type of non-volatile memory that contains critical boot information for the computer, such as the BIOS firmware. Another example is any type of permanent data storage like hard drives or SSDs. And remember, non-volatile storage is persistent and typically used for long-term storage. So in summary, Volatile memory like RAM is used for short-term data access and performance, whereas non-volatile storage is used for long-term data retention. All right, so now that we understand volatile versus non-volatile storage, let's move on to local storage types. A local storage refers to any storage device physically attached to a computer. And we'll look at various forms, including RAM, ROM, HDDs, SSDs, non-volatile memory, optical drives, and external flash drives. All right, so let's talk about RAM or random access memory. So as mentioned before, RAM is volatile memory. It is used for temporary data storage the CPU can access quickly. And the use case for this is running active applications, storing temporary data needed for processing and managing active sessions. And then we have ROM, which stands for read-only memory. And ROM is non-volatile and contains data that does not change frequently. The contents of ROM are written once and typically only modified by the manufacturer. And the use case for this is storing firmware such as the BIOS or UEFI, which initializes hardware during the boot process. So RAM and ROM are internal to the system and are critical to basic system functionality. Now let's move on to storage devices. And the first one we're going to talk about is the magnetic disk or the hard disk drive. So Hard disk drives, they use magnetic storage to store and retrieve data on spinning disks, which are called platters. And they are relatively affordable and offer high storage capacity, but they are slower compared to other storage options, and they are prone to mechanical failure due to moving parts. And the use case for this is large data storage needs where speed is not a primary concern, such as backup drives or for storing media files. Next, we have what is called the solid state drive or the SSD, and these are non-volatile storage devices that use flash memory to store data. Unlike HDDs, SSDs have no moving parts, making them faster and more reliable. And the advantages are they offer higher speeds, lower latency, and they're more durable. And a use case example for this is operating system storage, application storage, and any situation where performance is a priority. And SSD significantly improves system boot time times and application loading times. And then we have what is called non-volatile memory express. So non-volatile memory express, this is a storage protocol designed specifically for SSDs to utilize the high speed data transfer capabilities of PCIe's or peripheral component interconnect express. Non-volatile memory express drives are significantly faster than traditional SSDs with lower latency and greater throughput. And the use case for this is high performance tasks such as gaming, video editing, and running virtual machines where speed is critical. 
All right, so now let's talk about some other local storage types. And the first one is the optical storage drive. So optical drives, they use lasers to read and write data to disk. You got CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs. These are all forms of optical storage. And the pros are they are portable and useful for data distribution, such as movies, music, and software. The cons are they are slower compared to HDDs and SSDs and have relatively limited capacity. And the use cases for these these are things such as archiving data, distributing media, or installing software. Next, we have what are called external flash drives. So flash drives are small portable devices that use flash memory for data storage. They connect to computers via USB ports and SD cards are often used in cameras and other devices. And the pros are they are highly portable, easy to use, and generally affordable. The cons are they have limited storage capacity compared to hard disk drives and SSDs, and they are not as durable for long-term storage. And the typical use case for an external flash drive is they transfer files between devices, backing up critical files temporarily, or they could be used as some type of portable media storage. Ultimately, these local storage devices, they offer a variety of options based on capacity, speed, and and portability needs. All right, now let's move on to local network storage. So unlike local storage, which is directly attached to a device, network storage allows multiple users or devices to access shared storage over a network. And the first one we're going to talk about is the network attached storage or the NAS. So NAS is a storage device connected to a local network, providing shared access to files from multiple devices or users. Its pros are it centralizes data storage, making it easy for multiple users to access, backup and share files. Its cons are depending on the network speed, access can be slower than direct attached storage and it requires network configuration. And the typical use case is small businesses or home users who need a shared space for documents, multimedia, or backup. So network attached storage devices, they are often used for storing media libraries, document archives, or as a backup solution for all devices on a network. Next, we have what is called a file server. So a file server, this is a computer specifically dedicated to storing and managing files for network access. The pros are it provides centralized storage and file management, user account control, and shared resources for multiple users. The cons, it's more complex to set up than the NAS devices and requires server hardware and proper software configurations. In a typical use case, organizations needing centralized file management, security user permissions and shared access to resources like database or application files. So file servers, they offer more advanced features for managing data access and security, making them suitable for business environments. And then we have cloud storage devices. So cloud storage, this refers to storing data on remote servers managed by cloud service providers and accessible via the internet. And the pros, they offer scalability, remote access, and data redundancy across multiple geographical locations. The cons, they are reliant on internet connectivity, and there may be concerns over data security and privacy. In a typical use case, there are backup solutions, file sharing, sharing and storing data that needs to be accessed from multiple devices or locations. And popular cloud storage providers include Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive. So cloud storage allows for convenient access to data from anywhere with internet connectivity and is becoming a common solution for both personal and business data storage needs. So to recap, we've covered a lot of ground in understanding different types of storage. We talked about volatile versus non-volatile. So volatile storage like RAM is fast and temporary, while non-volatile storage like SSDs and HDDs retain data even without power. We also talked about local storage, and this includes RAM, ROM, hard disk drives, solid state drives, and non-volatile memory express drives, optical drives, and external flash drives, each serving you unique roles based on capacity, speed, and cost. And we talked about local network storage, and this comprises network attached storage devices, file servers, and cloud storage, offering shared access to data over a network. Now, understanding these storage types is crucial for choosing the right solution for any given task. And this is a key part of the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. 
All right. So with all of that being said, let's get into this check on learning. So which of the following storage types is considered non-volatile? Would it be random access memory, read only memory, cache memory, or the central processing unit? And the correct answer would be read only memory or ROM. So non-volatile storage retains its data even when the power is turned off. ROM is non-volatile as its contents remain intact without power. In contrast, RAM is volatile and its data is lost when power is removed. Cache memory and CPU do not serve as storage and do not retain data without power. Next question, a user wants a storage solution that offers fast access speeds for local data storage on their computer. Which of the following will be the best option? Would it be a magnetic disk slash hard disk drive, a solid state drive, an optical disk, or an external flash drive? And the correct answer would be a solid state drive. So SSDs, they provide faster data access speeds compared to hard disk drives, which rely on spinning magnetic disks and optical disks, which have slower read write times. While external flash drives can also provide fast access, internal SSDs generally offer superior performance and integration for local data storage. And the final question, which type of storage is primarily used for accessing and sharing files over a local network? Would it be a solid state drive, a network attached storage, random access memory, or an optical disk? And the correct answer would be network attached storage. So network attached storage is a storage device connected to a local network that allows multiple users to access, store, and share files. It is specifically designed for network-based storage needs. SSDs, RAM, and optical disks are typically used for local or direct storage rather than network-wide sharing.